Hey guys, Aaron here again. Welcome back. This is episode three on my video series on how I shot my first feature film entitled Tethered. If you missed the first few episodes, I recommend you go back and watch them. Number one was the introduction and number two is an overview of the camera gear that I used. Now in episode three, I want to show you the Video Village that I had set up. If you're not aware, Video Village is the nickname that is given to the area where the director can check out a big monitor and other people that are interested and need to see the footage that is being shot. They can gather around that area or village and check it out instead of having to be over the shoulder of the cinematographer. So in doing my research on this, I realized that the technology is super simple in reality, but the cost is really high and it just didn't make sense. I know that from the time that I got my first drone and kind of had to assemble it, I had a video transmitter chip, very small, that I had to include on it. This is before the days of DJI and their cheap drones. And it came with a little chip receiver that you just hook to a monitor. And none of that was expensive at all, and that was years and years ago. But if you look into the wireless transmission for video cameras, you'll be blown away at how expensive that stuff is. You probably already know. And it's really because of that that I've never had a video village on any of my shoots before. So if you're in the middle of researching this kind of stuff yourself, you'll know that latency is one of the big contributors for the price of the video village. The lower the latency, the quicker in real time, you get the picture up on that monitor to when it's being shot, the more expensive it is. Now, if you're using that monitor to pull focus or something like that while things are moving, then yes, that is very important. However, for a video village, in my opinion, you're gonna see it whether it's a second later or it's at the end of the day when you're looking at dailies, you're gonna see what it looks like. So after doing my research, what I landed on was the Hollyland Mars 400S. Now they have a model without the S, just the Mars 400 that you lose a couple features on, but it wasn't much more to upgrade to the S. So I went ahead and pulled the trigger. And of course for this and all the other products I'm gonna show you in this video, I will have a link to buy them in the description. So right here on my main rig is the transmitter. Now in my last video, I did not have these pieces in that I had broken to uh, replace. So I couldn't show you the whole setup, but I just wanted to show you the whole rig here and how it is all attached. So this is the Ninja Inferno, and it has uh, an HDMI cable that runs over here to our transmitter. Now, working backwards, this Inferno gets the signal from this HDMI cable, which is going into the Fuji X-T3. So whatever this sees transmits it over HDMI up here, and this passes it along to our transmitter. And our transmitter is obviously going to wirelessly transmit the signal. And that signal is going to be picked up by the receiver. So let me show you the rest of my bundle that I have here. This is the monitor that I selected to use for the director's monitor. It is a Lilliput A12. It's a 4K monitor. It looks really nice and uh, it's not too expensive. One of the reasons that I chose it is because it has an included V-mount bracket on the back of it so you can get a V-mount battery. And here I have the newer battery that is uh, super economical. It has a little button here on the side that you can press to show you battery strength remaining. And I found that this battery lasted an entire day of use without needing a recharge in between. And there is a D-tap cable that connects into that V-mount right there that is powered by this battery that plugs right into the bottom of our monitor. And it is the perfect length. Another reason why I use this combination is because I can use this same big battery to power our transmitter. I found and purchased this cable that connects into the side of our transmitter down there and has a D-tap on the other side. And you can plug it right into our battery like so. So now with one power source, I have power for the monitor and the transmitter that will last all day. So no worrying about changing batteries or anything like that. So for the video signal, it's as simple as a short HDMI cable from our receiver into the bottom of our monitor. So if we take a look at the bottom of this monitor, you can see that there is our DC power. Here is our HDMI. It actually accepts up to four different HDMI inputs. And you can also use SDI if you are that advanced. And it even has an SDI out. Here I have this thing flipped over so you can see kind of how everything is mounted together. 
Now, if you watched my first video, I had this little newer piece for a shoulder rig for the main rig, and I realized that I needed some handles and some bars and some pieces to hold things together that was really a lot like the shoulder rig. So I ended up buying a second shoulder rig and using most of those pieces to assemble this part here. So with a stripped down shoulder rig with the rails that are at the bottom, I just used some of the big thick rubber bands to hold our receiver into place on the bottom. And I bought another piece down here that screws onto the end of the rails and essentially has a uh, ball joint here that you can screw into a monitor with a quarter inch thread. So when I flip this thing over, it will sit right there on the handle so you can set it on the ground, walk away, not have to worry about it. And then when you are ready, you just pick it up. Now the one weak spot is this ball joint thing here. I think it's just a cheap piece of this, which is screwed into that. I need to upgrade this to a better one that locks harder because no matter how hard I lock it, it's just really loose and still swivels around. So when you pick this thing up and you're not ready for it, your monitor will slide and it'll feel like it's about to fall off which it will not fall off, but uh, it's not very ergonomic. So if anybody has a suggestion for one of these, please put it in the description because that is a major weak point of this. So really quick, I wanna power this thing on just to show it to you. So you can see right here, uh, we have our camera supplying signal to our monitor, our monitor sending it over to our transmitter. And when we come down, in just a second, as soon as it sinks, that is one of the um, weaknesses of this system, I would say, is that it does take a while to sink sometimes at the beginning. Once you have it going, it's fairly reliable. And there we have it, a nice out of focus door handle. But the range on this thing is really good. You can uh, go a long way through walls, all of that good stuff. I won't recite all of these specs for you. You can check them out from Hollyland, but I will mention one of the really cool features of the 400S. There is a little uh, QR code on the back of it and Hollyland has its own iPhone app, but you open their app, you scan this code and it will instantly connect your phone. So up to four people with phones can receive the transmission. So you essentially have up to five devices, including the monitor that can be seeing the signal at the same time. So not only would you not have to spend money on more receivers, but you would not have to spend money on monitors because your phone can be used as that. And of course, you could project your phone to a big screen TV or anything else like that you wanted to with iOS. So if you go this route, the one tip I will give you is that even when you hold in the power button here to power off your monitor, you'll still see a red light over here because it is kind of in standby mode and it will drain a little bit of power. So I just go ahead and I disconnect the cable from the receiver as well as the cable that goes to the monitor from the battery so that you're not using up any battery overnight unexpectedly. And interestingly, the V-mount battery did not come with a charger. So I got one of these. I'll put a link in the description to this too, but it is essentially a D-tap charger. I always kind of write what the chargers are for in mine because they all get confusing as to what they go to. And uh, you just plug this end into the wall, obviously, and you plug this end just into the D-tap, the same place that gives me power for the monitor. So it uh, charges and uses power from the same place. And in the case where I store all of my batteries and uh, some other stuff, I have a second one right here. So at the end of the day, I would pop off the one from behind the monitor, plug it in, and I would stick this one back on the back of the monitor. So in the morning, there would be a fresh battery that would last all day, and the new one would be all charged by then. So if you have any questions or ideas for a better video village, please put them in the description below. Also remember the Facebook page, Help Me DIY. You can go there and ask some questions. It's easier to communicate over Facebook than it is over YouTube. And if you found this video helpful, please take the second to click the subscribe button and the thumbs up button if you did not like this video and you made it all the way to the end. Uh, mm, hit the thumbs down button two times. Thanks for watching, guys. I will get the next episode out in the near future. If you have a topic that you would like me to discuss, please put that in the comments below, and I'll see you guys next time.